the iPhone 12 has some exciting new technology inside of it. But the, really the key feature of this brand new phone is the new A14 processor that promises to be way ahead of the competition in just about every marked way. But is it actually better in like a real usable way? Let's find out. Ooh, I'm borrowing that, I can't break it. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So what we're gonna do today is, we're gonna find out, can we edit a whole video on the iPhone 12? What is the experience like? And is it faster? Is this processor as powerful as they say? And yes, again, I would like to thank Apple for letting me borrow this iPhone 12. So let's get right to it. Now we are gonna need a few key accessories to really make this work as well as it can. Um, I've got a keyboard and a mouse that I've already paired to the iPhone, which is how crazy is that that you can do all of this stuff straight to an iPhone, right? Um, now I did already, you're gonna need some way to get the footage into the iPhone and I'm using the lightning to SD card dongle. I already imported all the footage on here. One of the negatives, uh, there's still no progress bar. So it was very frustrating to transfer all the files over. And normally when I do this, I have like the big monitor here, but I don't know what's going on with my screen capture device. It has just started to crap the bed for lack of a better term. So we're gonna record onto the phone as we're doing all this. So just keep in mind, that as the phone's doing all of this powerful stuff, it's also screen recording. So this should be pretty incredible. Let's go over to the app. So the app that we're gonna use uh, is the app that we always use when we do these video editing videos. Is It's an app called LumaFusion, which is probably the most powerful video editing tool that you're gonna find on the iPhone. I'm not sponsored by LumaFusion, it's just a great tool. And something that I'm noticing, can you see this? Look at how cool this is, that the, when we did this on the iPhone SE, uh, we still had that like old school, big accessibility uh, mouse cursor. And now when we do the mouse cursor, it's the same cursor from the iPad. So I can't, when we do the accessory video on the iPhone 12, it's gonna be nuts because check this out. It's just like, it's like the iPad experience, but on the iPhone. We've got the unboxing video. We've got the three layers of 4K from the unboxing video with the main one being 4K 10-bit from the Lumix S5 and then the other are 4K 8-bit from the GH5 and the G9. So let's see how this works. Let's go. Okay. How's the audio sound? This was just pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Ready? You ready? That was so much better. Man, the speakers on the iPhone sound really good. I hope you guys can hear that as well as I can. And the Apple Watch, that had some oomph to it, which is what I was hoping for. So we, we did get the version product. Man, those speakers, those sound good. And I was kind of concerned because the speakers, there's a bigger speaker grill on the iPhone 11 as opposed to the iPhone 12. And this does have the case on it. So that's pretty, those speakers, those are pretty good. I don't normally talk about speakers as much until we did the Microsoft Duo video where the speakers were so bad. So how is just like the scrubbing performance? Looks pretty good. Like that A14 um, should be a very powerful chip. We already did this on the iPhone SE and it worked perfectly well. So I know, I have no problem. I don't have any doubt that the iPhone 12 can do it if the SE can do it. But look at how smooth that is. Like scrubbing like this is, this is 4K 10-bit files. Um, this main clip is 4K 10-bit. So that is, I mean, there are computers that have problems uh, processing this kind of stuff. And I'm not seeing a single slowdown or a single stutter. So let's pick a random spot right here. Play. Touch ID in the power button. I really... It didn't take any time for that. Play. It's not 100... Okay. That's pretty good. That's something that I've noticed very recently in a lot of the newer like codecs, like with the A7S III and even the Lumix S5 at times. Um, when I'm using like a more traditional program for video editing, I'll have like, it's a slow ramp up towards, okay, it, it starts and then it doesn't get to like full speed until a few seconds in. And that's really frustrating when you're trying to move fast. So I don't see any slowdowns. I don't see any stutters. The audio is working perfectly fine. Let's start cutting this up a little bit. So we are gonna eventually layer all of this stuff on it. Here we go, we'll start, we'll edit the intro. That's what I normally do on these videos is we'll do my intro edit and then we'll start moving stuff around um, to make sure, so. The iPhone 12. I messed up, so you can always tell. That one of the things is you wanna edit your video as soon as you can after you've shot it because you remember all the mistakes you've made. The iPhone 12. See. There was a mistake if you didn't notice. So we'll cut that, delete, command B. Let's do the, let's set our motion. We want move in. We'll do the 
There's the zoom out. Where's the zoom in? We'll do the zoom in. Okay. Let's make sure this worked properly. Is it any good? Let's, Let's find it. out. I like that. You know, you want to have... I know a lot of people don't like jump cuts, but I like jump cuts a little bit on YouTube because it makes everything a little funnier. I think it makes it a little funnier. Uh, I like it. I like it. I like editing these videos, or I, I wouldn't do as much. Find out. The protective box. It's okay because it's in a box. It's okay because it's in a box, right, Apple? Don't be too mad at me, Apple. Don't be too mad. Let's find. Don't be too mad. I love the MX Master 3, too. This is not a video about the MX Master 3, but um, I very much like it. So we just need to do what I call the push in. So we'll go over here. We don't necessarily want. No, let's not do that. Let's go to this one, because this is the one where we can just zoom in and move it with our hands, which is really nice. Makes it super easy. And if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So I'm very excited. I'm a big fan of my iPhone 11. Okay, that's pretty much the cold intro. Um, and that worked pretty well. I didn't have a single problem getting that edited. And since I've been shooting all of my stuff in camera, I don't really, like, there's no need. This is not log footage, so we don't really need to grade it at all because um, ain't nobody got time for that but let's see what kind of color options we would get if we did want to uh, change up the color on this a little bit. I always start off with the original color profile um, that just gives you the normal things like contrast, brightness, saturation, the normal things that like you would really edit when you are trying to do like your initial grade. This doesn't really need any contrast or saturation to it because it's already it's a straight out of camera it's already got plenty of that stuff in it. If I were to do anything, maybe we'd bump up the uh, saturation just like a teeny bit. A teeny bit of saturation. I would probably, maybe we'd skew it a little red. I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. It might be a little too red, but you don't really need to do too much touch up um, when you're doing this. If you have a LUT or something, you can add your own LUT like right here. So let's add, ooh, let's add golden. Yeah. Let's get it like old timey westerny look. So we'll we'll keep it on golden right there, courtesy of Motion Array. Well, thank you, Motion Array. And then if we want to make make other things, we could continue to make changes, add some blurs, things like that. Crystallize? What's crystallize? Oh, no, thank you. Nope, don't like that. Chroma keys. If we were gonna blue screen or green screen, and then there we go. So yeah, we added a little bit of color. We added a little bit of saturation. So that's what it looks like after we've messed around My with it. iPhone 11. I've been using it for a And that's what it looks like normally. Let's see, what does our volume look like? And what I really like, again, this is not sponsored by LumaFusion, but this has basically all of the tools that your normal NLE or video editor would have, but it's on your phone or even like an iPad. The only thing it doesn't have, it doesn't have like scopes, like vector scopes or waveforms. That's really the big thing keeping me from using it, but you've seen, we've got all the tools. We've got the, you can see the audio. Um, the SC is what I use when I'm out and about. But th You're probably pretty good so long as the audio stays in the green. If you've got it in the red or the yellow, like high yellow, you're probably a little hot. You can change up the volume or the decibels by clicking on that. I think this is good, so we're not going to mess with it. So let's see how it starts to, let's see how it continues to work when we add another layer of 4K. Okay, so there's our next layer of 4K, and let's add the top down view. All right, so we now have three layers of 4K video on here. How's it working now? I've been using it for a long time. The SC is what I use when I'm out. No slowdowns, still no slowdowns. Like, the, the audio is definitely not aligned there. But I'm still not seeing any stutters or any slowdowns. Like this, even the A13, we saw this on the A13 when we did the iPhone SE video. That didn't have any stutters. This doesn't have any stutters. This is, man. When the thing we'll have to try out next is the camera on the phone can actually shoot in 4K 10 bit, like with Dolby Vision, like with a Dolby Vision grade. We'll have to try that. I bet with the HEVC, like the high efficiency codec that Apple will use to capture that, to try to save as much space as they can on the phone's hard drive. I bet that file, I'd have a tough time editing on my normal computer, but I bet I would have no problems here. That's Apple's real thing is their silicon is fantastic for those high, like the, the codecs of the future have problems unless you have a very beefy machine now, but the codecs of the future work really easily on Apple stuff. So yeah, I'm not gonna belabor the point. I'm not gonna keep saying it over and over. This editing is very seamless. I'm not seeing any problem. There's real three parts of video editing. There's the workflow where you process and bring all your images in. There's the cutting and then there's the rendering. And we've seen the big problem is the process, the workflow, 
we had to use a dongle, there's no progress bar, who knows, like, you don't even know until it's just, maybe it's done, maybe it's crashed. Uh, the cutting, you, there's no problem. The cutting has no problem, perfectly fine. It's been perfectly fine for the last few Apple processing generations, but let's see what kind of efficiencies we've gained in the rendering. That's the big part. That's where you just spend your time just waiting for something to happen. So let's go over to five minutes. We've got five minutes, so we'll export in movie. We'll save it to the photo, so we'll save it onto the phone itself. Resolution will do 4K. We won't do ultra video quality. That's not something that I upload my YouTube videos in normally. So we'll do standard video quality because 50 megabits per second, that's about right. We'll leave audio quality alone. We will use H.264 because that's what I upload mine in. It is not a 360 VR video. So it'll take, it says five minutes. That would be wild with a grade. You saw we did grade one of the clips. We've got three layers of 4K, one of them being a pretty beefy 10 bit file. Um, so let's see what we got. So are we ready? Let's move you over here so you can see that. Okay, ready? Get set. Go. All right, so right out the gate, it looks like we're a little bit, right out the gate, it looks like we're a little bit faster than real time. I mean, you can see we've edited about 16 seconds and we're at 13 seconds. If it's gonna be like at real time, I'd probably consider that a win, but let's see, I'm not gonna make you sit through and listen to me have commentary over the next five minutes. I'll let you guys do the magic of video editing. You don't have to do that. The magic of video editing, you don't have to wait. So, okay, and we've got, it looks like we've got about 15 seconds left on the edit. You can see we're a little bit slower than real time, but let's get ready to stop it. Okay, ready? I'm ready. I'm prepared, ready to jump. Ready to jump like a video editing tiger or something. Didn't make sense. Okay, and stop. Okay, so it took five minutes and 23 seconds to render that file that had the three layers of 4K. So it is a little bit slower than real time. And you know what? That's pretty darn impressive. When you consider the price that you buy this phone for, that's a faster rendering time than my MacBook Pro can do. It's not as fast as my, you know, my desktop PC, but that's because that has like, a very, it's got a graphics card that costs more than just the phone itself. So that, I think that's very impressive. I would consider that to be a win. There's no shocks here that the iPhone 12, yes, absolutely. It could be your only video editing computer. You've got the mouse support, you've got the keyboard support. You could get an HDMI dongle, hook it up to a monitor. Would I recommend this? No, I'd still probably recommend at least an iPad just cause it's a little easier to use, um, but you could absolutely do this. You saw there was no problem with the cutting. There was no problems with the rendering. It renders faster than my actual laptop. And I would say I'm pretty darn impressed with this. I didn't imagine that there was gonna be a problem. Hey, we're back really quickly. I was editing the video and I wanted to run the test again. So I ran the test one more time. Can you see with only one layer of 4K and it's the 4K 10 bit. And that video rendered the same five minute clip rendered in three minutes and 13 seconds, which is way way faster obviously than real time. So that's pretty darn impressive stuff. So if you're only doing very basic cutting and you don't do a lot of grading, you don't do a lot of like multicam, you'll you'll have faster than real time. That's legitimately faster than I think even my desktop PC goes. So that's very, very impressive stuff. And if you do more realistic things like I do in my videos with multiple cameras, you'll get a near real time render, which is also pretty darn impressive for a cell phone for a cell phone. Okay, back to the video. But what else would you all like to see? Let me know what else you'd like to see about the iPhone 12. Leave me a comment down below and we'll make a lot more content on this. Have a whole bunch of fun because I'm having a lot of fun with this phone. I just, I still love, this is my favorite case. This is my favorite case. And if you like this video, you wanna see the unboxing, you wanna see my initial impressions, kind of dive into the initial setup of the phone. I've got that video right here and you can click, click right here. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.